D-pads, face buttons, start and select buttons, shoulder buttons, analog sticks, triggers, a menu button. Most gamers who've gamed within the last 20 years are familiar with these. But the question is, what the heck are these? Oh, you don't know? These are called trackpads. You typically find these in laptops, but the most famous and most recent video game application for these would be the Steam controller and the PS4 controller. How useful could a trackpad really be? I mean, these must be experimental, right? I mean, why bother doing them? Why bother adding them? Why use them when you can just use analog sticks to aim? Well, I'll tell you why. out of the way first, the trackpad experience on a Steam controller and presumably the Steam Deck will be nothing like playing with the trackpad on the PS4 controller. The main reason people write off the trackpad on the PS4 is because, simply put, it is a gimmick. It's in an awkward position where you can't really make use of it for any primary functions except for maybe gimmicks like swiping left or right to switch weapons, or worse, clicking it in so that you can pull up the scoreboard in a multiplayer game. How fun is that, right? So the experience is nothing like the Steam Controller's experience, and it's probably nothing like the Steam Deck's experience as well. I would say about half the reason the trackpads are useful is due to Steam input, which I've already covered in a separate video, so go look at the link in the description if you want to see it. So while many people use the trackpads to offer mouse-like precision, or just to have a mouse be available, there are plenty of ways to use the trackpad. I will be using the Steam Controller to demonstrate all of the options, Keep in mind that Valve does update Steam input, and the Steam Deck may have different control schemes for the Steam Deck, so I'm hoping this video doesn't get outdated by the time the deck comes out. While this video shows me customizing my right trackpad to quite an extensive length, all of these customizations can be done on the left trackpad as well. Left and right trackpads have the exact same feature set and customization functionality, and there's ultimately no difference between the two, really. Customize to your heart's content. So the first style of input we'll be looking at is none, as in it doesn't function. You can disable it if you want. The next input style is directional pad, in which it acts as a D-pad. You can have it require a click or not require a click to actuate. You can have this D-pad actuate when you just press it or when you click it in. I recommend leaving the layout eight ways so you can do diagonals properly. Do note that while it says directional pad as the style of input, you're not limited to mapping this D-pad of sorts to D-pad buttons. You can set it to whatever you want to be. W, A, S, D, up, down, left, right arrows. You can even do buttons if you want. I'm not gonna worry about that though. If you disable requires click, you can actually set the click to do a totally different action from the D-pad. In this case, I have it set to the dodge button. So using Momodora, Reverie Under the Moonlight, it's a 2D game, so the D-pad makes sense here. Just touching the trackpad, not clicking it, actuates directions. As you can see here on my controller overlay, it's doing pretty good. If you click it, you can actually dodge roll, which I've purposely set. I've actually 100% of this game years ago with my Steam controller. Next is Button Pad. It's almost the same as a D-pad, but it's worse. The next real useful style of input is mouse. Mouse is exactly what it says. It's basically just like a mouse. It's kind of basic. You can set the click action to be whatever you want, but truth be told, there's not really much to say here other than turn the haptics all the way up. Well, actually there is one thing I should mention. Some games such as Apex and Destiny have weird issues when you're trying to use simultaneous mouse and controller input. In Apex's case, it makes aiming really freaking jittery, and the insane jitteriness makes it feel worse than using a mouse or a thumbstick in general. So if you're gonna play Apex with a Steam controller and you're gonna use true mouse aim, you're gonna have to commit to using only keyboard controls on your Steam controller. If you're playing in an FPS that doesn't have any issues with mixed input, using mouse would be ideal. Just don't forget to turn gyro on. Next is mouse joystick. 
Mouse and joystick is a really weird option. I get why they added it, but it just doesn't feel right to me. So basically, it's a right stick input that acts like a mouse. Of course, due to the limitations of the right stick as a whole, it just feels really weird. Like, I don't know how to describe it. It certainly feels a lot better than using the right stick on its own, but it just still doesn't feel right. There's like a weird jelly feeling when I'm aiming. Like, it works, but then like, it just feels like I'm like moving jello. I don't know how to describe it. Next on the list is joystick move. Joystick move emulates the dynamic of a right stick or left stick if you prefer. Like you know how when you hold your right stick and you pull it left or right and you keep it that way, you just keep rotating in that direction? Yeah, same deal here. I think you understand what I mean. Joystick camera is similar to mouse like joystick, except it's arguably worse in terms of jelly feeling. It doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel meant to be used with an FPS. It's more like for a third person action game, honestly. You know, something like Dark Souls. Next style of input is scroll wheel. By rotating your thumb on the trackpad clockwise or counterclockwise, you essentially get to move a scroll wheel. Keep in mind that you're not limited to using scroll wheel up or scroll wheel down. You can set these to anything. It's a very novel approach to controls, honestly. That said, I'm not that creative, so I didn't really find a use for it. I feel its best use is when you're on the desktop. When you're on the desktop looking to scroll through web pages, this is very, very useful. The next option is the touch menu option. Upon touching the trackpad, it essentially brings up a menu. My two button menu right here lets me switch between item 1 and item 2, both 1 and 2 on the keyboard respectively. You can add more than two buttons though. There is a touch menu button count option that lets you change how many on-screen buttons there are. The maximum being 16 buttons on this menu. There are many ways to actuate your selection, though I'll get into that in more detail later. The next control style is mouse region. So mouse region is kind of difficult to explain without demonstrating. Essentially you can have the trackpad control a region of your screen, or by default it controls your entire screen. Essentially if you move your thumb to the top left corner of your trackpad, it'll go to the top left corner of your screen, you know, top right, etc, etc. You get how it is. The main two options you want to worry about is the position options as well as the scale options. The horizontal and vertical position scales change where the center of the region would be. By default, the center of the region would be the center of the screen. Changing the horizontal and vertical scale of the region changes how far the regions go from outside of the center, how far it radiates from the center, so to speak. I believe mouse region's true purpose might lie in twin stick shooters or MOBAs, but truth be told, I would much rather play twin stick shooters using joystick move. The next style of input is Radial Menu. Radial Menu is quite frankly insane. You get up to 20 menu buttons and a center, so technically 21. And essentially you get to define what's on it, and essentially it pulls up a circle menu. As I alluded to, there are many ways to actuate your selection. Here I have it set up so that basically whenever I hover over it with just touch alone, it actuates the button. So as if it's like I'm pressing 3 or 2 or 1 whenever I just hover over it. You can have it actuate when you click the button, or you can have it actuate when you release it. Radial menus are technically also available on analog sticks, though I don't believe the analog sticks have the ability to set a center. On a trackpad though, in a radial menu, you have the ability to set a center option. The next style of input is single button. Basically, the trackpad acts as a single button when you touch it or when you click it. There's no fancy gimmicks here. Don't pick this option, please. This next option has, well, basically, it's got kind of a crazy setup. It's made by local madman, Jim Smart. His video demonstration will do far more than my video demonstration, but essentially, Flickstick maps your analog stick, or in this case, a trackpad, to a cardinal direction, you know, military style. Press the trackpad up or thumbstick up, it faces you at 12 o'clock. Press your thumbstick or trackpad down, you rotate 180 degrees, or 6 o'clock position, you see? 
you just keep doing that multiple times and it just rotates you 180 degrees. It's kind of crazy, really. Think of it more as moving your relative positioning rather than your absolute positioning. This control scheme was designed with gyro in mind, so if you don't have gyro, then you're kinda screwed. This control scheme was designed with first-person shooters in mind. It seems like it could work with third-person shooters, but I personally haven't tested it out enough myself to know. Go watch Jib Smart's video right now. The next input style is directional swipe. So basically you swipe to the direction you want to go. So on this D-pad looking thing, you actually assign what you want to bind. As you can see, I assigned S to down, so I gotta swipe from top to bottom to press S once. This seems like a control made more so for immersion rather than any sort of usefulness in a game like Apex Legends. Yeah, Apex probably just isn't the right game for this kind of control. I'd have to really test and see what games could benefit from this. Next is Hotbar Menu. Hotbar Menu is definitely designed for MMO style games or, you know, Minecraft, Starbound, Terraria. As you can see here, I'm not playing any of those games, but instead I'm playing Apex Legends. So the hotbar menu can fit up to 16 menu buttons. So compared to even a radial menu or a touch menu, the hotbar menu is a little weird in my case. Like it's very usable and honestly I just need to get used to it. Both the touch menu and the radial menu are a lot more intuitive than this I would say, but it's very usable if you need it. You press down on the trackpad and you click it as well. And then you scroll with left and right by clicking, and then you press up to actuate it. I'm not really sure how useful this would be in like an action scenario because you can't just have it actually on, you know, touch, unlike say the radial menu or the touch menu. But I think it would work okay in like an MMO setting. It was really fun exploring what trackpads can do again. It's been a long time since I've done a lot of Steam input, personally speaking. The upcoming Steam Deck has really revitalized my interest in Steam input. That said, if you're going to be playing a lot of simple games, a lot of 2D games with not a lot of item management, etc, etc, there's a lot of options there that cater more towards the MMO or Minecraft player. And there are some games, well actually quite a few, competitive online games that have issues with simultaneous keyboard and controller support. For games that have input-based matchmaking, I totally get it. They don't want mouse players to totally dominate the controller player. But at times, there are single player games that just have the weirdest issues with this. Some games like Destiny 2 lock you out of using both, mostly for balancing reasons because guns have different balancing between controllers and mouse. So for the multiplayer games, I kind of get why they do it, but for the single player devs, I don't understand why you're doing this. Please, 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 just make simultaneous keyboard, mouse, and controller support work. That said, if you want, I can start a series on exploring the very basics of what Steam input can do for other inputs. Till next time.